Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are outsmarting smart shapes again. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at working with some of the other beat attached smart shapes. So that includes trills, octave lines, uh, brackets, and the lines, as well as the custom lines will behave s somewhat similar to all of these uh, beat attached elements. Although the custom lines I'm going to do in a separate video, so uh, you have that to look forward to. But uh, let's start with the trill. And uh, adding a trill is simple as, you know, the same as uh, adding a hairpin. You just double click and drag to add it, right? And uh, interestingly, with the trill, we can add them below the staff as well. If we just make sure our cursor is below and the arrow is pointing upwards, we can add a trill below. Now, this is a little unusual, but if you have, uh, you know, two layers and you need both uh, parts to be trilling, you can, you, that's how you would do that. So that option exists. Now, trills, unlike hairpins, can never be put on an angle. In fact, if we right-click the uh, main handle of a trill, we have the contextual menu that shows that the Make Horizontal option, we can check it, we can uncheck it, or do whatever we want, but we'll never be able to use that end handle to uh, create an angle, right? In fact, there are two uh, handles at the end of the trill, and both of them will only uh, basically just shorten or lengthen the trill it, uh, extension line itself, right? So that's how you do that Le on the right side. On the left side, we can do that as well. And you can, of course, just move the entire thing with the main trill handle, all right? Uh, the other uh, tool right next to the trill tool is a trill extension tool. And if you use that, you'll basically get the same thing without the TR symbol. And uh, this could be handy for other types of notations. You could put other texts in front of this if you want. Um, but uh, that's, that's available to you as well, and it will behave exactly like the other trill line. Now, uh, this is a little bit outside of the trill tool, but uh, it is important enough that I thought I'd mention it. There are trill symbols that are available with flats, sharps, and naturals uh, on, th on the top here, um, but they exist as custom lines, and I'm just going to show you how to do that real quick because I think for people entering trills, this, is, uh, this could be an important thing. So what you need to do is go to custom the custom line tool here, go to the Smart Shape menu, choose Smart Shape Options, and down here where it says Smart Lines, we're going to choose Custom Line. And to the right, we're going to choose Select. And this will bring up the, the Custom Line Smart Line Selection. And there, as you see, there's a whole bunch of them. I'm kind of scrolling through them. There's a whole bunch of different options. But the ones we're concerned about are just about halfway down. And here they are. The uh, Trill with the Flat, the Trill with the Sharp, and the Trill with the Natural. So just choose one of them, the one that you want. Select it. Press Select press OK. And now while you're in the custom line tool in the Smart Shape palette, now when you add uh, that element, it would be a trill with the flat sign, right? If you had chosen the sharp, you'd get the sharp trill. All right, so that's how that works. And let's talk about octave lines. And for this, I'm going to jump down to my piano part. Uh, octave lines work very similarly, and they're right next to the trill extension. We have an eight octave, or one octave, and two octaves of 15, right? So if we choose the eight, we can just drag and uh, click, double click and drag to get the eight VA right there. And um, you'll notice that the eight VA line extension has a hook that uh, faces downwards towards the staff. If I were to create a eight VA underneath the bottom staff, like so, we get the eight VA below the staff, and the hook will go upwards. So the hook is uh, contextual in this regard. Uh, and of course, the same thing with the 15 MA. And we can add that below as well. And the hooks will go up and down accordingly. All right. Now, I'm not going to wade into the controversy about whether or not uh, 8VB or 8VA is appropriate for octaves below. But I am going to tell you that there is an option. And, and I know that some people are very passionate about that and, and would rather see 8VB. By default, out of the box, Finale will give you 8VA on both sides. If you want 8VB on the bottom or 15MB on the bottom, this is how you do it. Go back to the Smart Shape menu, Smart Shape Options again. In the top section here, we have a pull-down menu that will give you options for octave up, down, two octaves up, two octaves down. And uh, what you can do is select octave down. And with the select button, what you're going to end up doing is selecting a character from the Maestro font. And you'll see that 8VA is selected for the octave down. And to find the 8VB, I believe it is number 215. So if we go down a little bit, 
There it is, 8VB. If we choose that, press select, press OK, and you'll watch my 8VB will 8VA will turn into 8VB, right? For the two octave version, just choose two octaves down, select, and this is in slot 96 according to my notes. So we're going to scroll upwards to slot 96 right there, and select that and you'll see that you have 15 MB here as well. Now there's a couple other options within that, uh, within those symbols, and you can use, uh, instead of using VA or VB or anything, you can simply just use eight. And there's actually a character in the font set as well for that. And uh, I believe it's up here somewhere. Well, there's the 15 and there's the eight. So you could set uh, both octave up and octave down to the eight and the 15 if you want. That's available as well, all right? Now, uh, one thing to note, let me just do something here. Let me zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to delete this guy and this guy. And I'm going to create a 8VA from bar 4 all the way to bar 6. All right. Now, this looks normal in the score. Um, but I'm going to show you what happens in the part. Go to the piano part. And you'll see that that 8VA now crosses the system. Uh, crosses into different system staff because it, I, I started in bar four and ended in bar six, right? Ooh, this is whole chart is a little bit messy here, but that's all right. Um, <coughs> and you can see what happens is that Finale will put a, a an extra 8VA on the second system with parentheses, all right? So that's a nice little feature of that. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, it's funny that this parentheses cannot be changed. There's actually nowhere... Uh, in the in the program to change this parentheses. If you didn't want to see the parentheses on the 8VA or the 15MA, um, you don't have an option. So, uh, I mean, uh, it makes sense to have it, but uh, just be aware that uh, you could never not have it. All right, so that is uh, what happens across uh, systems with the 8VA and 15MA, all right? And then finally, let's talk about some of the brackets and lines. Now, next to the 8VA and 15MA in the Smart Shapes uh, palette, we have the next six options are different versions of brackets with and without dashes and lines, right? Now, the first four um, uh, will behave somewhat differently than the, the, the lines, and I'm going to show you how in a, exactly a second. The, um, the, the brackets themselves, when you add those by doing the same thing, um, these will be by default horizontal. And unlike the trill and the 8VA, um, these can actually be not horizontal, right? So if we choose to uncheck make horizontal, we can actually angle these uh, bracket lines now, which is a, a little bit different with the trill and, and the 8VA and 15MA, which are not allowed to be on an angle, right? So this could be handy in some circumstances where you have to uh, have that angle uh, for that bracket. Interestingly, when you angle a bracket, let me just zoom in a little bit here, the hooks themselves will remain parallel to the staff, right? So, in fact, if you keep going to a steeper angle, eventually the hooks will kind of disappear because they're trying to remain parallel to the staff, right? Um, so that's just an interesting feature. And, of course, if you have an angled bracket and you want to undo it, just right-click and choose Make Horizontal again, all right? And, of course, you have the same adjustments that you have with most of the other bead attached lines, you know, left and right extensions and everything, and the, the center one will just move it around. Um, let me just make this an angled bracket for a second, zoom out. And I'm going to show you something else with this. We're going to extend this all the way over here on a little bit of an angle. You can kind of see that. And, again, we're in the score, but something different happens across system breaks. And for this, I'm going to go to my violin part to illustrate this. And you'll see just that the, the bracket in now, going from bar 4 to bar 7 here, even though I made it on an angle in the score, is now horizontal. And there's a reason for this, and that is because above the Make Horizontal option in the contextual menu, there's two other options here, Make Horizontal over System Break or Maintain Angle over System Break, right? Uh, make horizontal will be checked by default whether or not make horizontal is checked or not. And with this checked, it's going to make that uh, that uh, line horizontal across the system break. If you uncheck it, or if you check the other one, maintain angle, you'll see that the angle will now uh, remain for both of those lines, right? 
And of course, we can just go back and undo that, make it horizontal. All right. So that's just a little bit of uh, an interesting uh, variation of the horizontal. And interestingly, when you have lines like this that are that cross systems, you do have some individual control of each half of it. So in this case, I can select the first one and you know readjust the angle, put it wherever I want to, however I need to do it. And then the same with the second one, I can kind of adjust that however I want. So it is, there's a lot of flexibility um, with the uh, the brackets and the lines in that regard. All right, so that is the brackets. And this this will work exactly the same for the first four of these, which is the, um, uh, the solid line with two hooks and the single lines with uh, the solid line with single hooks and the dashed versions of both of those. And incidentally, the meta tools for all of these, the first one here is O, Z, K, and Y. O, Z, K, and Y for those four brackets. And then finally, the last two, the solid line and the dashed line, which are meta tools L and D. Um, these behave slightly differently. By default, these are not set to horizontal. And uh, the line tool for uh, is going to be what you're going to want to use for things like this in your piano part, where you want to have the uh, a line drawn from the um, you know from the the left hand to the indicating that the left hand goes up to the top staff, and then you can do it backward down to there, and then back up. <coughs> All right, these line tools are are pretty uh, slick. I mean, you can kind of draw them wherever they're they're kind of free form in a lot of ways like that. The <coughs> same with the dash line behaves the same way. And as I mentioned, they are uh, not horizontal by default, but we can change them to make them horizontal, right? <coughs> and the other thing you'll notice that uh, with the system break set, set up, it's set to maintain angle over system break, right? So in case you have one of these things crossing a system, like between 8 and 9 here should be across a system, I think. Let's go back to that piano part. Yep, you'll see that the angle of this line is maintained, and the first half of it is in the, uh, the the system up here, and the second half gets put down there, right? If I were to try and check make horizontal, you'd get a <laughs> weird horizontal line, which would not look correct at all. All right, and then uh, one final thing I want to mention about this particular line tool is that I have the smart shape set to not snap. If I were to check snap to beats, using the line tool becomes a lot more difficult because it's trying to find the next beat to snap to. So it's a little bit harder to kind of freely draw lines in this regard. You can see as I'm kind of struggling to actually just, you know, create it. I have to create one and then edit it, you know, in order to make it work the way I want it to. So particularly with the lines and probably with the brackets too, uh, you know, the snap when attaching to beats, uh, having that unchecked is probably your better bet for creating lines in this manner all right so i think that covers it uh we got trills and octave lines and brackets and lines and as i mentioned a lot of this applies to the custom lines as well which i will get into a lot later anyway but um but uh, you can uh, apply these uh, lessons to that as well most mostly anyway all right so thanks for watching and come back we'll uh, look at some more of the smart shapes and thanks for watching and i'll see you then